So distributed tracing, what is it? Well, distributed tracing is a way to monitor applications by tracking requests across services. Rather than your system being a black box where the user sends in a request, magic happens, and then hopefully something meaningful comes out as a response. Traces makes it possible to follow along with the request and sort of peek into that black box and see all the transactions needed in order to answer that request. Having this at your disposal can obviously help you when you need to pinpoint failures, or the cause of suboptimal performance. Tracing is language and framework agnostic, meaning it doesn't really matter which framework or language you've written your application in, you can still get traces to work. But what is almost always needed is some kind of instrumentation or tweaking of your application in order to get traces to work throughout your system. The microservice architecture obviously has a lot of benefits, that's why a lot of us are using it, but it also comes with a cost of reduced visibility. Having more services means that it's harder to track which services depend on each other, and being a developer in one of these systems, it's easy to lose sight of the global system behavior. And in my experience, it's very likely that you have both hot paths and bottlenecks that you're just unaware of, and this is where tracing and trace analytics can really help you out. What usually ends up happening in a microservice system is that newly created microservices make use of existing ones, which of course is natural and what we want. But after a while, what seems like a simple request for one microservice is actually a complex chain of transactions between a bunch of services before that original request is answered. As a developer in a system like this, you're often blissfully unaware of the complexity until one, error starts happening that you need to fix, or two, your request becomes really slow and your user starts complaining. So tracing is great, yay! Everyone should add tracing to their applications, right? Well, you have to take into account the investment of actually instrumenting your application because it's both a time and money investment. It takes time to get traces to work properly. It's definitely not trivial. And once it's working, you will probably need some third party service in order to make sense of your trace data, both for visualization and analytics. One of these services is called Lightstep, and we will be looking at that shortly. And those services, of course, cost money. For really small applications, it's often just not worth it. But once your app has reached a size where tracing would be really helpful, the effort of instrumenting all your microservices can be quite substantial. And this balance is really important to keep in mind when building out your system. With all of this in mind, let's start looking at a third-party service that helps you in both visualizing and analyzing your trace data. And I would say probably the most established service out there that I'm also familiar with, namely Lightstep. And conveniently enough for us, Lightstep has this demo application with some dummy data that you can click around in just to get a feel for how their UI is laid out. I will leave the link uh, in the description below this video if you want to click around in it yourself. Lightstep is an amazing tool that's been around for quite some time now and it does a lot of things. Uh, but what I want to focus on in this video is this Explorer tab. So let's go into that. In here, you're able to filter on different aspects of the trace. You sort of build a query to find a trace that you're looking for. You can uh, filter on the time that it actually happened. You also have a latency histogram, so you can sort of zoom in on traces that took around one second, for example. But let's just jump into one of the traces to see how the trace details looks like. So let's pick this uh, API make payment one. Here you can see the trace. So a trace is made up of one or more spans. And in this case, these colored bars are the spans. Each span represents work done by a single service. And they all have time intervals and metadata associated with them. So you can say that spans are sort of the building blocks of a trace. So if we look at this trace to see what actually happened, so you can see that the user made a request to the API make payment, and you can see that this took the full period of time, but during that time, you can see that this is sort of split up into two subtasks. So first, you can see that the load transaction happened, and during this load phase, we loaded the CSS, apparently, and we submitted the payment and you can go even further into the submit payment to see what happened you can see that here we sort of loaded 
probably the user in uh, some database. And after that phase, you can see that we uh, sort of requested the payment status, probably to show the user if the payment went through or not. So you're able to see, peek into the black box and see what happened here, which of course can be super helpful in order to find errors, but also to sort of analyze and see what actually takes time during this request. So if we just compare it, you can see that this takes 220 milliseconds compared to this, which actually takes 2.7, 2.1 seconds. So if we were to optimize anything, we'll probably start looking over here. Now let's take a look at a request that failed to see if we can try to figure out what actually happened. So you can see that we have some red bars which indicate errors. And this API, we are trying to sort of get the profile. And uh, because this one is red, we open that up to see what actually happened. So apparently we managed to authorize the request. Uh, we tried to get the user, which looks like it succeeded through the database. And then we call some backend service and that is red. So what happened in here, we tried to get the profile for the user uh, and that failed. And here you can see some log message, which wasn't very helpful, but then you at least know, okay, so it's over here that we're gonna need to try to figure out what happened. Now let's take a look at the Encore platform and how you can work with traces if you choose to develop your app using Encore. This is the overview page for this particular Encore app. This is an uptime monitoring app uh, which monitors other services to see if they are running or not. And the front end uh, that's built on top of this back end looks sort of like this. So you can see which services are up. You can add new services. like so, it takes a while and then it pings it, you can see that it's up. And this is actually Encore's demo application. So you can see that we have some banners and some floating cards over here to describe what you're looking at. So I will leave the link to this demo application as well in the description below the video. If we take a look over here to the left, you can see that this application has one environment each Encore app has one or more environments and these environments can be deployed to different clouds. We also support PR environments out of the box. So if you create a pull request, that will create a new environment. Let's go into the traces for this environment. So here is the list of requests made for this app in this environment. And if you click one of these, you will see the trace associated with that request. And because Encore knows your application, you're able to filter on specific services and even endpoints within that service or subscriptions to pub sub topics like so. So then we only see requests made for this particular endpoint and you're able to filter on errors as well together with other filters. So for example, duration or user ID. So if you have authenticated users, you're able to filter on a particular user ID. So you can see the flow of that user within your system, which is really powerful. And when you're using Encore, traces are instrumented for you, which means that you get insight into your app right from the first line of code you write, even for hobby projects. And also Encore is completely free for smaller projects. So check it out. Well, let's now filter on the site service and the add endpoint, which gets called when you add a new site to monitor. Let's pick one of these and look at the trace details. Here you can see the span to the left and to the right you can see sort of in detail what happened during that span. So to start off with, we added the new site to the database. We made some database queries where you can see exactly what's going on. And after that, we made a PubSub publication to this topic, which in turn uh, created this trace because in the monitoring service we had a, a subscription to this topic so then we can jump to that trace so let's do that so here is another trace then uh, in the monitoring service which actually checks if the newly added site is up 
So you can see that we check the site and we start by getting it from the database and then we proceed by pinging it and that returns true because the site was up. And if we jump over to the flow diagram, which is the architectural diagram that is automatically created because Encore knows how your application works, we can see that this trace makes sense because we started off in the site service which published to the site added topic and the monitoring service which actually subscribes to this site added topic. So lastly what I want to show you is how you can make use of traces when developing locally if you're using Encore. To start your application locally you do Encore run within the project folder and like that I have my project running locally. And when it's running locally, we have this API development dashboard that you can go to that helps you out with development. So let's do that. This is the development dashboard together with the API Explorer where you can test shoot APIs as you're developing. And I've been a bit sneaky and introduced a bug into the system. So let's try to use traces in order to debug our system. Let's do the same thing as we did before and add google.com as a site that we want to monitor. We call that API and everything looks great. So let's ping it and see what happens. We then get back that it's not up. Mm -hmm. Strange. I would assume that Google is up. So there's probably something wrong with our service. So let's go into the sites.add one and see what actually happened. Here we can see that we added it to the database. Everything was fine. We published to this pub subtopic. Let's go in and see the monitor service processing that pub sub publication. Okay, what actually happened here? So we get the site from the database and then we ping it and it's not up. So here you can see that the problem is that we have some unsupported protocol schema, which means that we haven't added HTTP or HTTPS. So the bug that I introduced was actually commenting out the code that added that for us. So you can just imagine trying to figure this out without having traces. You would probably put a breakpoint in the beginning of the site.add and step through and then try to follow along with the pub sub topics and yeah, yada yada. You would probably do it, of course, but it would take a longer time than having traces at your disposal. And that's it for this video. Hope you've learned some things about distributed tracing, how and when you might be helped by it. And feel free to reach out to anyone on the Encore team, for example, through our public Slack channel, if you have any questions regarding Encore. See you soon.